Hey everyone, Jill here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where we teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. I know you guys have been asking a lot for After Effects Basics channel, but unfortunately we don't have time for that yet. However, this got me thinking and so today I will teach you about dynamic linking in Premiere Pro. We're going to edit a video and link it with After Effects, Photoshop and Adobe Audition, so you'll get three tutorials for the price of one today. Awesome, right? Now without any further ado, let's open up Premiere Pro and get started. We have a basic edit here that we've already prepared, but we've got a couple of issues. The first is our character scene, which is a dog in this case. Just like in the tutorial that we've made a while ago, we want to put a background behind it. So we need to mask the dog out of the frame, but since it has a lot of tiny hairs, it's quite difficult in Premiere Pro. We could take a couple of hours to mask around it since we just want to use a still frame of it, but let's say that we don't have the time for that. So we're going to use Photoshop for this instead. Step number one, find the spot where you want to freeze frame. Next step, click on the export frame button in the program monitor. If this button is not visible, then head over to the plus icon and drag it onto the program monitor bar. Once you've clicked the button, a small menu will appear. Now give the screenshot a name, set the format to PNG, since that is not compressed, and set the path. And also hit the import into project checkbox. And then click OK. Now the PNG file will now be added to the project panel. Right click on it and select edit in Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop will open up now and your freeze frame will be visible right there. First hit Ctrl J and this will create a duplicate layer. Now why do we do this? Well it's always nice to keep a duplicate so that when something goes wrong we can just go back. Okay next we're going to select menu and choose select subject. Photoshop will do its best now to select the subject which is in this case the dog but it could have some difficulties, so we can tweak that manually afterwards. First, hit the mask button right here. Then we're going to disable the original layer. And now you can see how good or bad the selection actually is. Now, since it's not that good, I'm going to the select menu again and click on select and mask. Then on the top, click on refine hair. If it's still not good, select the hair tool, choose your opacity on the right and go over to the edges of the selection. You can alter the size of your brush by holding Alt and right clicking and dragging your mouse to either left or right. And if your background view is not the same as this one, go to view and set it to overlay. Now once done, hit OK, then hit save. Now it will be saved as a Photoshop or PSD file. So open up Premiere and import that file. You can merge the layers or use the individual layers. In this case, you can choose since we've disabled the original background layer. Now once imported, it will have a transparent background so you can place anything you want behind it. And the best part is that you can use Alt Tab to go back to Photoshop, make some changes, save it again and it will automatically apply those changes to your PSD file in Premiere Pro. And that's dynamic linking. Okay, next up, dynamic linking to Adobe After Effects. Do you see this shot right here? Well, I would really like to track a title on there. And yes, we've already seen a way to do this in Premiere Pro a while back, but After Effects is just way better for this. So first up, let's duplicate the layer by holding Alt while dragging. Now, why would we duplicate it? Well, that way we always have an original track available. And later on, we will see why exactly this is useful. Now right click on the duplicate layer and select replace with After Effects composition. After Effects will start now and it will immediately make a new composition or sequence. If this is your first time in After Effects, welcome. This is what it looks like. Okay, now let's make a text now by clicking T, which is the text tool. You can also find it in the menu on top right here. Well, I'm just typing a simple title. Then I'm going to the Tracker tab. And if you can't find this, then go to the window and select Tracker. Next, click on Track Motion and you will now see a track point on screen. If this is really small, simply zoom in by scrolling your mouse wheel. Then drag it to your contrasty point on screen. You can make the box a bit bigger so that After Effects has more information to work with for the tracking. And make sure that you're also in the beginning of your timeline. Once you've found a good point, edit the target and choose your text layer. Then hit the track forward button right here. You will see the scene playing and the tracking point staying on the same position that you've selected. And when it's completely done, hit apply and now After Effects will create a whole bunch of keyframes and track the text onto that point. But we're not done yet. Now disable your original video layer here and hit save. Go over to Premiere Pro and now the linked After Effects layer will only have the track text in it so it has an alpha or transparent background. Now why is this useful? Well, let's say that we want to change something to our layer itself. Like for instance the colors, 
but we can do that on the original layer. Or if we want to add some effects, we can simply do it over there or we can put an adjustment layer between it. And we don't have to go all the way back to After Effects and redo everything. Or if the After Effects file wasn't good, we can simply delete it without our video file being gone too. And if for some reason the file is missing or Premiere can't find the media, then right click on it and select Link Media. And go over to your folder where you've saved the After Effects file and select it. It will immediately relink. Now just like with Photoshop, you can always go back to After Effects and make some changes. You can save it and it will automatically apply to the linked file in Premiere. There's no need to export. Now, if you have closed After Effects already, right click on the file and select Edit Original. Now, did you enjoy that little tracking thing that we've made here in After Effects? You want to learn even more about that software now? Well, I've got some great news for you because we have an amazing beginner course that teaches you all the basics of Adobe After Effects. It's highly rated, has a lot of positive reviews, and with the link below, you can watch it for free for two weeks. So, if you want to learn more about the wonderful world of After Effects, and check out the course. We start off by teaching you the workspace, creating masks, blending layers together for basic compositing, creating cool effects, animations and keyframes, green keying, all kinds of tracking like we did in today's video, motion graphics and shapes, even advanced animations with expressions. So basically, all the essentials that you need to know when starting off in After Effects. So go ahead and click that link in the description down below right away. And we're moving on to our final dynamic link, which is going to be with Adobe Audition. Now I won't go into too much detail, but Audition is basically used to edit audio. And what we use it for most is to extend or shorten audio tracks. Wait. What? Is that possible? Well, in most cases, it is. So let's say that you're editing a video on a specific music track, but suddenly you see that either your music is too long or too short. What do you do? You start cutting it and try duplicating some parts, but since you're not a madly skilled musician, it basically will suck. So let's make it a whole lot easier for you. From our timeline, we move to the edit menu and select edit in Adobe Audition. Then select sequence. Give it a name and now your sequence will be linked in Audition. Now select your music track that you want to extend or shorten. Go over to the Properties panel, look for the Remix tab and click Enable Remix. Audition will now analyze your clip and this may take a few seconds. Once done, it will give you the target duration and this is the length of your audio clip. You can now set this to however long you want it to be. But keep in mind, Audition will do its best to shorten or lengthen it, but it doesn't always work with every type of audio. It will look for repetitive parts that it can either duplicate or delete. But if your audio has a lot of vocals in it, these can be cut or duplicated as well. So keep that in mind. But it's also possible that it isn't able to make the audio the exact length that you want it to be. It can be a couple of seconds longer or shorter, but it will say that right here behind Remix Duration. Okay, once done, you can save your audition file and then go to File, Export, Export to Premiere Pro. Now give it a name and a location and set the option to export to a stereo file mixdown. This will give you one track or one file where all the audio will be mixed together. If anything needs to be changed, you can always go back to Audition if needed. Now, normally, you could check the import in Premiere checkbox, but since an update last year, it's not possible anymore. So please Adobe, fix this. Now let's hit export. Now like I mentioned, it doesn't automatically import in Premiere, so double click in the project panel and select the Audition file from there. Then set the copy to new audio track. New audio will be added to a new track. And once again, it's nice that you still have the original file in case something went wrong or needs to be altered. Now one bad side to this is you import an XML file, so not an Audition file. This means that you can't go back to Audition, make changes and save. It will not affect this XML file, so you'll have to export again. And that's it guys, now you know how to properly link between different Adobe software programs. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and if you have any more requests, let me know in the comments down below. Now I'll see you guys next week for a new tutorial and as always, stay creative.